here. I'm happy to the, be here. I've never met you before. I just yeah. got one sick call. Yeah. That was very. That was exciting for me. <laughs> was it? Because <laughs> I like I don't know you, and you, you know you're you. And and it was one of those classic calls like I just can't make it because like <laughs> like literally like you sounded horrible. I did, and I felt terrible for you. When I, I get sick, I get it in my chest. Oh yeah, every time you and, do. Yeah, so I, I apologize that I missed, but here I am. No, I'm excited about it. That was for a different movie, even. Yes, it was. It was for the Ghostbusters movie. Right. Do you live here? I do. I live here, and then I have a place in the East Coast. On the East Coast, yes. that's vague. In in on the water in the East Coast. Okay, on the water yeah. on the East Coast. Yeah, I don't want to secret. <laughs> secret. So that leaves us a whole coastline. Yeah. So is it above north, like Virginia? North. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, up, up there. Yeah. yeah, like a beach house. I'm from the Northeast. I, yes. I know where where exactly. Uh, well, I was born in Canandaigua. Canandaigua. Yes. Uh, which is a Finger Lake town. Really? Yeah. And in, in it's like upstate, upstate New York. New York, yeah. A little scary sometimes up there, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you walk through the woods and but topless, you know, <laughs> um, screaming. <laughs> Here I am. I'm dizzy. Um, I don't know. I I never found it scary when I lived there, but I guess. But it, were you in the woods? No, my we lived on the lake. Oh, really? Yeah, not like we lived like a block away from the lake. My dad owned a marina on the lake. He he ran the boat uh, yeah. racket. Yeah, rented boats. Yeah, it's like a marina, a little like How fancy big... word for gas station for boats. So, so did you grow up in boats? Yeah, I did. And then after that, he worked for another boating company. So, so he was I, a boat guy. He's a boat guy. And yeah, when you were a little kid, you just, could you did you you could start a boat and yeah, did, did you sit... I went to sailing camp. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Could you pull it off now? Like if someone oh, yeah. put you on a sailboat? Yeah, I, I just went not too long ago. Really? Yeah. Did, by yourself? No, 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 no. I like the small boats. Like sailing big boats is kind of uh, scary, right? Yeah, it's scary. I like this little like sunfishes or sailfish. Th- you can do that by yourself, right? Yeah. yeah, you can do that by yourself. And you just go out with a sa- and you can manage it. Yeah, yeah. that's impressive. Well, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing skill. Did you ever think? I love of- it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It's relaxing. Oh yeah, being out on the water and. Do you do it in the ocean? Um, I do it like Martha's Vineyard and oh, yeah. ponds and. But ocean's uh, scary, right? Yeah, I'm not up to. I'm not into that. Right, in general, <laughs> yeah. or just sailing. Yeah, wise. there's sharks and yeah. stuff. No, I, d- I, I don't. That l- makes me sweaty. I don't like that. I don't I like y- lakes and ponds where I know nothing. Right, can go wrong. Nothing too bad can go wrong. Yeah. I don't. I don't like not being able to see the bottom of water. Me neither. It's horrible. No, even in like swimming pools. I know. And at night. Yeah, and not swimming pools happen. at night. No, I'm not going in. I'm the same way. I've never met anyone that felt so afraid of being in a pool. <laughs> but you see one movie where like something comes out of the drain, and you're like, it can happen. I can't. It's I can't, all connected. It is. I can't look at water without picturing something beyond massive. I know. I, coming out of it. I know. I just went water skiing and I fell, hmm. and so I was waiting for the boat to come around, and I'm just by myself. Yeah. And I just imagined. B- bad things, creatures. Yeah, not even a shark. Not real Made creatures. Up creatures. Yeah, me too. Like they're like I was down in La Jolla and just, but mine are always like so big, like like as big as a uh, building. Oh, coming out. I, the little <laughs> ones scare me too. But like I have this horrible fantasy that there's something much larger than we. But if ever... it's that big and it eats you, you'd probably be alive in the stomach for a while. Sure. Which might. There might be other people there. There might be other people. That might be the future. Sure. You don't know what's going on. That's the gift. (laughs) That might be the the salvation. Yeah. So you're upstate New York, you're a little girl on boats. (laughs) Yeah. And your father's running that there's men around hanging out at the marina, guys like boat guys. I'm just trying to picture Yeah. That wasn't lascivious in any way. I'm just trying to picture the universe of you walking into your dad's shop. And there's like, oh, there's Joe. Well, I was very young. Oh. I think we moved from there when I was three. So you didn't know Joe at the marina? No. <laughs> Joe is long <laughs> since gone. Uh, no, but then in, uh, we moved to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and he worked for Trojan Yacht, Ooh. which is a boat company. Is that fancy? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're still around. <laughs> what did he do for him? <laughs> he was in sales. Selling yachts. Yeah. And I mean, he had an office and stuff. What'd your mom do? What was your mom? Just a, uh, she was a, a boat wife. <laughs> She'd just dance in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> she used, she's done a lot of different things. Maybe that's where I get it from. She was 
The characters? No, I just mean like w- tr- wanting to do different things and mm-hmm. um, moving on from things quickly. Yeah. Um, she was an interior decorator for a little while. She worked in a jewelry store yeah. for a long time. She worked for Special Olympics for a long time. Yeah. Um, she funny? Um, as a, like in a mom way. No, like yeah. Like oh. I don't think I don't think she's gonna you know yeah. grab the mic anytime soon. She's not not Stand witty. Up. No. Did your gum just fall out? That oh, was my nicotine lozenge. <laughs> I'm so glad that I was my it, tooth. <laughs> that would have been bad. I gotta go. I'm bleeding. That's never happened. <laughs> they yet. just keep falling out one by one. I don't know what's happening. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. It is were, tooth colored, though. If it ever falls out again, you have to let people know that it's I just, gum. Right. It's no, It's a lozenge. <laughs> okay, it's a lozenge. No, and that'd be sad if like, I just insisted on continuing, but I, I was whispering really bad. And it was bad. your tooth, and I'm you put sorry. it back in. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> they said they fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's funny. It is funny. So she was it's funny in a mom's way. Now, do you yeah. have siblings? I'm just trying I have to, a brother. How's he doing? I have an older brother. He's older. Great. Yes. He's um he's actually mentally um handicapped. Mm-hmm. Um so in some ways I refer to him as my younger brother because he's uh, yeah. not able to, you know, live right by himself. Uh-huh. Um, and and did um did you like that must be I guess not I guess it must be difficult, but there must be a sensitivity to that. Like, like it must oh, be yeah. challenging growing up like that. Yeah, I think you go through different phases of it. Yeah, you know, um, when you're really young, you don't know that anything's wrong. Right. Um, you know, and then you're a kid, and then you go through the like, get out of my room. Right. Um, and then, you know, we, we've always been very, very close, and he's. The sweetest person. I mean, yeah. he, is, he is like, and what I meant by younger brother is he, he does have a mentality of like a six, seven year old. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's the most positive. Yeah. He's a it's, walking lesson for me. It's for sure. like because he stays in that place. Yeah. And he's not uh, affected by certain things. And yeah. It's, he's very like. I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat, or I want to watch TV, and it's very, um, he just, he could... doesn't think about how he looks or is perceived or anything. It's, it's just, it's interesting to, to watch sometimes. Does he feel, have you had to be protective of him in yeah, your life? Yeah, when you're younger, you right. definitely have to. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cause, you know, here in the, the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, right. Just but he was very horrible well, kids. Very well liked in my neighborhood. Does he watch okay. your movies? <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> he doesn't quite understand because I, you know, we're a sitcom generation. So sure. we grew up, so yeah. he thinks those families are real. Are real. And they live in, like, he thinks the Tanners from Full House live in San Francisco and they just live in this big house and they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when I got into the business, I think yeah. there was a little, like, wait, what? Like, he knows of actors, so, but he so- thinks everyone lives. In oh, Hollywood. Right. All together. Right. So in different homes in different that there's ho- cameras in all yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. So so, <laughs> so he's wrestling with this you know, the possibility of that illusion shattering because of your job, I mean, in he, a way. Well, he knows, he knows about actors, but he also thinks the characters are real people. Sure. So with me, it's easy because he knows me, but... Um, yeah. Does he say like you know you were a different person? Like it was funny what you did as that person, or does he just see you as you? Usually? I think he just sees me as me. Yeah. 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 But I mean, like I remember one time we were picking something up at the drugstore, yeah. and we were paying for something, and he was just like he said to the lady behind the counter, he's like she was in bridesmaids, <laughs> like really loud. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, that's okay. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> So she is proud, and he he's knew. He's proud. It's he really surprised sweet. you. He's the sweetest on earth. So your both your folks are still around. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, mine too. Great. I, I'm trying to say it with a good tone because sometimes I'm like, yeah, they're still, <laughs> still plugging <laughs> along. Yeah, parents. So all right, so you go to Lancaster. Yeah. And are you a, a problem child? Uh, did you read that I was? <laughs> no, I, there wasn't that. There's not a lot out there on you. There's some. No, I know because I don't talk about myself. You don't even have. You're not even on the uh, the social networking platforms. No. Good for you. I'd like to use this opportunity to, to say, say, if anyone's following me, you're not following me. <laughs> that is not the real Kristen Wiig. That's not me. Does that piss you off? Mm, 
it did in the beginning because because you freaked out like who's pretending to be it's, it's never like what it is or yeah. even like a tabloid story it's just knowing that people believe it right is the part that's that's frustrating because people think they really right. are following me and the people who are saying they're me sometimes are saying really right dumb, dumb wrong things, things. and does, don't you wonder who the fuck does that no i don't care oh good you have pretty good control of your mental environment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sit there and go like, oh, that That's person. That's the key to life. It control is. Control over your mental environment. I like that. Yeah. Did it? Did you always have it? Mm, I don't know. Huh. No, I mean, I, I don't know. It's a hard question to answer. Well, yeah, we obviously were more expanded I mean, no, when probably. we were younger. Yeah, yeah of course not. <laughs> it's a fucking disaster yeah. being young and confused. Yeah. So you're no, I didn't read you were a problem kid, but like in in Pennsylvania, I can't picture Lancaster. Is it dark? No, it was very. It's like Amish right. town. It's it's beautiful actually. It's changed a lot now, but it was you so, know riding bikes by cornfields and and you see wagon people. Yeah, people <laughs> otherwise known as wagon people. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that up. I don't know why. I I've never it? heard that. I don't think it existed before nope. just now. But nope. you know what I'm talking I about. Do. The Amish. Yeah. 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 But I don't mean it as yeah. a slang thing. No, I know you don't. No. Aren't there Mennonites? But they would here? wear, I mean, they would ride well, in wagons. Sure. Yeah. And they seem nice. Yeah. I, did you go buy their jellies? Yeah. Sure. Sure. They're around. <laughs> <laughs> they do keep to themselves. It's not like. No, I know. I know. Yeah, it's like Orthodox they their, Jews. They have their own. But less frightening. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that because I'm, you know, one of them. Okay. A Jew. Uh, you know, I see them in Philadelphia. You go to uh, yeah. that the market, the farmers market. Yeah, yeah, the farmers market. Or what's that one downtown? Oh yes, what's the, it called? Um, Shit. Uh, something Street Market, right? Yeah, yeah. And they got the good sandwiches, oh, the Nick's so roast pork sandwiches. Yes. But but there's one whole area that's uh, the Amish people making Chocolate pancakes, pretzels, yeah, and baked goods, yeah, like donuts right there in front of you. You see them pour yeah. the sugar on it. Mm -hmm. How fucking. <laughs> Sorry. How great is that? It's, it's, it, there's <laughs> nothing better than that, really, if you think about it. Yeah. Because I'm at, at, a, at an age now where I'm trying to figure out what the point of everything is. And when you break it right down, eating like a fresh donut, that like, why can't it all be like that? It can be. Really? How do you feel after you eat the donut? That's not, if you keep eat, I'm saying if you could keep eating them without whatever reflection. Right. But happens. that's part of it. That's why. I, I'm having a fantasy. I'm oh, not, okay. this is not real life. Oh, I thought you were really trying to, <laughs> to figure to out. To support yeah. <laughs> eating donuts constantly. I thought you were trying to get to like the meaning of life. I am. Oh, you okay. have it? Well. I don't I, feel great about eating donuts after. Okay. Well then there's something to that. Sure. Yeah. I should you limit my think, donut intake. You have to think of things. The consequences of things. Yes. Right? Right. How, but that, how am I going to feel? That's how I make my decisions. How yeah. am I going to feel after I hang up the phone and say yes? Mm -hmm. Or if I say no, how am I going to feel? You think that while it's happening? I think before I have to make a decision, I yeah. think that, yeah. How do you usually do? Pretty good. Yeah? I mean, I think if you... Oh, it's so gross. Just what? Like go with your gut. Man, you can trust no your gut. Way. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to. It's all you have. My gut has made some shitty decisions out of neediness and desperation. <laughs> or you could argue there's no such thing as shitty decisions. Right. That well, you, you needed to do those, ho right. go through that horrible right. relationship, right. or like turn down that street. That's right. As life goes on, I realize that uh, you really have no choice but to think that way. Yeah, what else are you going to do? <laughs> Just beat <laughs> the yourself. shit out of yourself. <laughs> That's the option. Yeah, yeah how much you have yeah. invested in that. So, all right. So there you are. You're not an actress. You're a child mm -hmm. in yeah. Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And you, what do you, what do you, what, when do you start thinking like, maybe I'm going to be hilarious? Well, I never thought that. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's a normal yeah. thing to like, you know, perform in front of the mirror and, Pretend yeah. you're on stage when you're in the shower sure. and use the curtain as like yeah. the curtain for the stage. Sure. Um, it's not, it's, that's not great. Did you have people over for that? Yeah, like friends. Oh, yeah? You yeah. put on a show. Yeah, but like a couple people here and yeah, there. It yeah. wasn't like I invited the whole you, No town. flyers. No, no flyers. Um, <laughs> but I I was always fascinated with it, but I yeah. think every kid is. So right. I, don't, I don't know. And I, it just seemed like a different world. Like when you would look at those magazines like- yeah. What, what did they have back then? Like glamour. Teeny, uh, oh yeah, teeny bop pages. Teen beat. <laughs> teen beat. Not teeny bop pages. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they just look like people from another. Yeah. Like. L.A. was far away. There yeah. was no way to get there. It was like there was a wall around it. Yeah. I didn't know what it was, and I was fascinated by it. And, you, know, you were. In love with, you know. Who? Oh, my God. Jason Bateman. Oh, yeah. Ricky Schroeder, Kirk Cameron. Oh, Jason Bateman. Oh, yeah. He's a he's an interesting fella. I love him. I've worked with him a few times, and the first time I worked with him, I was like, I don't want to tell you how much I know about you. <laughs> <laughs> From those magazines? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I watched uh, two of your movies in a row. Which ones? Uh, the good ones. <laughs> the only two uh, good ones. <laughs> no. I watched uh, uh, Skeleton Twins. Yeah. And uh, Welcome to Me. Oh. Which cool. I liked. Thank you. A lot. Thank you. I cried at both of those movies. Those are two uh, very um, special movies. They're special movies. You should be proud of them. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Thank you. Good work. Thanks. I, I, I actually watched the Sausage Festival. Oh, sausage yeah. Sausage Party. party? <laughs> yeah. I've seen Bridesmaids and I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of your movies here and there. And then you pop up in movies like Martian, right? What was that deal like? It was so fun. It was I think it's a pretty funny movie. I, Matt is so funny in that movie. It's like it's, he's astounding yeah. as an actor. He's really. Uh, he's one of our greatest. Oh, no, there's no doubt. Yeah. And the nicest. Is he? Yes. He seems like a decent person. He's just great. He's such Believe a pro. It. And yeah. like, like I can't, like his range is, every time I see him, I'm like, this guy's the best. He's, and he's so, when he gets to do comedic stuff, I just, I want more. Yep. Yeah. In anything you like seeing him. Mm -hmm. The Oceans movie. So good. How, how many times did you, did you see, uh, the Behind the Candelabrum? Yes. Oh my God. I can't not watch that movie. Oh my God. You can't not watch it. Yeah. If it's on, like it was, oh, on, it's on. I kept watching it. I'd just pick it up wherever it came on. It's Who are you talking to, Mumbles? <laughs> <laughs> they were both so Mumbles. good. They were both so good together. It was so Oh, crazy. and that shot at the end when he's in bed and he's sick oh, and they yeah. made him look so skinny. Yeah. yeah. And he just so gives sad. him a ring. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what happens? You you go to high school, and yeah. are you confused? <laughs> Just about life. Yeah. Where do yeah, you? Well, I my I moved from Lancaster to to Rochester, New Whoa. York, in eighth grade. Yeah. Because my parents split up, and my mom was from Rochester, and I yeah. there a bunch because my grandma lives there, and she moved back there, and uh, they thought it was a good idea for me to go there because i was hanging out with some you know bad people kids <laughs> really yeah I love how it. old were you um 14 yeah let's see well beginning of eighth grade how old are you i don't know i don't either you getting in trouble though yeah hmm like yeah. with what dudes just, no just like like booze yeah not so much booze then but Sneaking out like cops, like prank no. phone calls, vandalizing, like oh yeah, what kind know, of vandalizing? Eggs, eggs, like breaking like, uh, things. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I think it was because we were all sort of like this gang of kids. Yeah, our parents were divorced. Yeah, we sort of like found family in each other. Oh and yeah, we just kind of like I don't Fuck know. It. Yeah, a little. Let's do it. Tear it up. I think so. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Didn't care about school. I yeah. Think, you know, I was like mad. And... Yeah. Let's teach the world a lesson. <laughs> well, it wasn't so much like that. But just like, it'd be fun. And like, yeah. you get away with stuff. And like, sneaking out was like yeah. my favorite thing to do. Oh, yeah. It's exciting. To jump out of like the window, climb sure. out of the roof, get in the tree. And your your yeah. friends are sort of like, come on. Yeah. And the moon is out. Yeah. Like, what should we do? It's should all we... quiet. Yeah. Did you steal cars? No, I wasn't that bad. Did you drive though? Uh, Eighth grade, you didn't take your mom's car or nothing, do any of the driving, mm, underage driving. That's exciting. No, yeah. not so much. Just ran around. Yeah. Yeah, with a bag of stuff. Yeah, like older kids and like, yeah. you know, you start in with like the drinking and the smoking, smoking cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, did you smoke cigarettes? Yeah. For a long time? Um, I mean, on and off. Yeah. Like I started when I was young. Yeah, 14 and then, for me. Yeah, on and off around that time. Right. And then high school, just like oh, yeah. you did because everybody did. How great were they? And then so good. college, and then on and off. But I'm I'm not a smoker anymore. Not anymore. No. Was it a struggle? Did it just go away? No, it wasn't. Um, I still do I the really, nicotine. Yeah, I really believe you. If you if you don't want to quit smoking, you're not going to. Right. If you're like I have to. It's really hard. It's, I think you really have to say like I don't like it. 
it gets it, and also it gets to the point where you you're just stupid. You get to a certain age where you're like, this is dumb. Yeah, like what no, are you doing? You're not really? winning. Yeah, you're not getting nothing from it, <laughs> and you just keep doing it, and yeah. you wake up and your lungs hurt. But I love doing it. Oh, like, it's so holding good. it, the lighting so it. Good. I mean, come on. There's some so great. It's why great. it's so. Addictive, yeah. It's so good. So but fun. It's not good. All right, so you it go to stinks. Rochester. Um, go to Rochester, yeah. Um, loved high school. Yeah? Yeah, I loved it. Um, Were you performing? Plays? No. Nothing? I didn't do... I mean, I think I was a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> really? Like the I mean, largest I, munchkin? No, I was like... I stood in the background, basically. Mm. It was like a high school production. With it was like makeup? the kids who didn't get the part got to be in the munchkins. <laughs> yeah. That's why they do Wizard of Oz. They had no idea yeah. <laughs> what your capabilities uh, were. But I didn't really try. Um, my mom is an artist, and I had always... Um, what kind? She does a lot of pen and ink, and now she does painting. Really? Um, a lot of pencil drawing. So oh. I, I really got into that, and I was really into art in high school. And Visual was, arts? Yeah, and I was going to do that in college. I majored in it. Um, in college? Yeah. Painting? Uh, drawing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, uh, do you still draw? I do. Ah. Yeah, I do. That's nice. Yeah, not as much as I... I don't want to say should, but as should. much as I'd like to. Yeah, pressure yourself to get that drawing done. Yeah, then they're really good. Yeah. <laughs> then you, you have spend fun. spend a lot of time? <laughs> yeah. What do you do, like pictures of people? Well, I used to do, yeah, very realistic. Oh, yeah? Um, so it takes A time. lot of times from like photos and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't get up until I finished it. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't do it and then come back later. I would just sit for seven hours and yeah. do it. Yeah. And then I found myself not doing it as much because yeah. i knew because i'm so hard on myself and like if it didn't look exactly like it i'd get like frustrated so then i just started doing like weird geometric oh yeah like why, why pressure yourself <laughs> reading about math and art and i got into that phase for Abstract. a little bit <laughs> yeah 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 just to take the pressure off of yeah, capturing so someone's fun. nose yeah and it's very meditative and you can just sit with like a graph yeah you know and you did a lot of those yeah, I do that a lot. Is there going to be a show of your work? I have always wanted to do that. Um, I, f- I don't know. I wonder if I would do it maybe under like a different name or something. How much do you have at all? Yeah, I have a lot of ideas for things for like the more linear stuff, but the actual drawing drawings, I have a few, yeah. What's a few? Like, are, like, are we talking like speed freak level? Like no. Like hundreds? No. I, no. The last one I really liked, I gave away. Um, and then I draw for friends sometimes as like a gift. Oh. You know? Small um, ones? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So you're going to be an artist of yes. some kind. Or like an art teacher is kind of what I thought. Huh. Because like I was like, how do you make money if you're just a, an artist? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just teach. I date a painter. Yeah. It's, yeah, you got, it's a tough world. It's hard. She's good though. She's doing all right. That's good. Big paintings. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a whole different world. It's very exciting to be with somebody in a whole different world. Isn't it great? No talking about show business. <laughs> <laughs> but the end up talking about it a little bit anyway. <laughs> a little. But she's like completely detached from it. But it's interesting when you see somebody that has a talent that you just don't know where it comes from. It's like, what? What is that? That's a, that's so great. It's yeah, it's awe. It's just That's sweet. You, you just go over to the studio and you're like, what? What's going on? Yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> did I have anything to do with that? <laughs> is that me? It is me. <laughs> she did want a very chaotic one of me. So w- when did the art dream shift? <laughs> when did it die? Didn't die. Um, you still do. No, it didn't die. Um, I think you you actually went to college for I it. I did. Yeah. Um, I went to a very small school. Um, yeah. In. Virginia for a year and then didn't uh, jive with that. Why would happen? Just not the place for me. Oh. It was really small and I was really, you know, having fun. <laughs> I was having fun. Boozing it up. Wait. Yeah, you know, doing yeah. all that stuff. Um, sure. And uh, so after that, I was like, I need to take time and like figure out like who I am. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was so what, you took- 20, 30. 20, so you, 21. Um, mm. one, so you went one year of college and you're like, I got to take a break. Yeah. Figure then, this shit out. So then I went to Mexico for three months. Really? <laughs> yeah. By yourself? Um, I went with a group of people. It was like, um, it was through Knowles. Do you know what that? It's like Outward Bound. Oh, really? Yeah. Do, were you sentenced to it? 
No. No. Oh. I wasn't. It wasn't like, sort <laughs> of like she's a problem. No. It, Put her no, on. A, f- a friend of mine did it. She did like a two week. Yeah. I think she went to Patagonia for two weeks. Yeah. And, um, and I just wanted, I don't know. Why do we make these decisions? You just, at the time, you know where you're what, supposed to go. Were you climbing mountains? Yeah. Yeah, we hiked and sailed and kayaked. That was I always picture swinging from a rope somewhere. <laughs> no, there's no that. No. no rope bridges? No. Oh. It wasn't like a, a you know, a I'll get your shit team together building. trip. Right, no, right, it was right. just like live outside and uh. learn how to be in nature. Did you take uh, ayahuasca? No, I don't even know if that was around. I mean, I'm sure it's been around for, what, 7,000 years. It's been around a long time, yeah. but it's gotten popular yeah. now with a certain... Class of person. Yeah. No, we didn't. We didn't mess yeah. with that. Yeah. Creative, sort of like middle-aged people are now seeing it as a practical yeah. uh, therapy for blasting your brain out and then deciding that you feel better about things. Hey, if it works. You haven't tried it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I don't know what would open up if I did that. Are you afraid? I think I would be a little afraid that something would like shift in me and change and I would never be the same person in well, a bad way. But it's weird because you do, you seem to take a lot of kind of strange, vulnerable risks in, in characters that you do mm-hmm. in your performing. Like, uh, there, there, there's some part of your approach to doing what you do that, you know, makes me go like, Oh, it's so open and I'm squirmy. Do you feel that when you're doing it? Um, like I think you... when projects come around and there's something in there that that yeah. is going to be scary or like challenging, I like that. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't um, find joy in repeating myself. Right. <laughs> um, Even characters. It depends. Mm-hmm. I mean, like SNL for me, it was, you know, when, if you had a character that that you know they wanted you to do again. Yeah. Uh, it's scary because, of course, you like okay. Well, I, I want it to be just as good. Yeah. And like the intro of a person is always the most exciting, um, for me. And yeah. And just topping it, but not making it the same sketch. Right. Was, such a challenge. But I, I liked that. Um, but you also know when it's time. You do to hang up the yeah wig. Yeah. After that, you know, you can only repeat it when it becomes sort of a. A, a sort of exercise in, you, you know, catchphrases yeah. or something. You want to leave it on a high note. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Well, you did so many characters, but we're not there yet. We're in no. Mexico. Oh, we're in Mexico. So uh, you come back from Mexico. Come back from Mexico. A changed woman. Changed woman. No, um, yeah. And then I, I just took classes at home at like local community college and um, art. Yeah. And uh, and then no inkling of being hilarious actress. No. Nothing. Huh. <laughs> no. And then I went to the University of Arizona. I know that place. Um, is that in Tucson? Yes. Because yeah, I was my... dating someone that was like, let's go there. And I was like, okay. Because I wanted to go out west. I yeah. wanted to go to California. But we broke up and I went anyway. <laughs> oh, before? I was like, I'm going. But I went for like summer school and like one semester. And I was like, I don't think. Too big? I, I wasn't. I was supposed to be there. It was like a, it was a good art program yeah. in a way some part of it, parts of it i didn't love but yeah. i just felt like i wasn't you know how it is when you yeah. go somewhere and you're like i'm not supposed to be here yeah but when you know it was it was a very fast decision because i i took an acting class because it was part of the the major was like studio art that's what it was called which was like three separate, you could kind of pick like drawing. So it was like an elective thing, like you could try it. You, you... Well, studio art was your major, but then you'd right. have to pick like, you want drawing, right. sculpture, um, performance art, mm-hmm. which were the, the three that I took. Yeah. Um, and I had to take, it, it was either like acting 101 or something yeah. else. And I was, I was hesitant to take it because I am not a performer mm-hmm. in my head. I yeah. hated speaking in front of the class. I would miss it if I could. I failed classes. Terrified? I didn't want to give book reports. Yeah, just uh, terrified. Terrified. Huh. huh. When I'm my, and I still have this a little bit, when I'm myself yeah. and have to speak in front of a group, I am not, I haven't uh, honed that skill. Hmm. I'm not great at it. I can, in, when I'm in the shower <laughs> and I'm having a conversation, like if I yeah. 
pretend I'm with people, yeah. I'm fine. Right. But I get um I get in my head when I'm telling like a story in front of people, like what where is the story going? Yeah. What are they looking at? Is my mouth crooked? What am I saying? How do I end this? Yeah. I get in my head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I've just never been in like the spotlight. I just never liked it. Shy and, so, and terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Not socially. Socially I wasn't shy. Were you but, popular socially? Um I guess. I mean, that's always weird to say. No, but, but wait, like, were you a leader person? I wasn't a leader. But were you, like, arty? I was arty on the side, mm. you know, in the so art classes. The but friends? then I would take, yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> but not in like a, not in like a <laughs> breakfast club kind of way, but like, um, yeah, I just had different, you know, Groups. upstate New York was very like, sort of, preppy and yeah. people would go to the yacht club oh. or like the country club yeah. or like they yeah. would go down to the lake and right. those were like that's what i did and um so you kind of just went along with it yeah but then in art but my school, true but then yeah. i would go home and listen to like new order and the smiths and not uh, tell me. <laughs> yeah. um it, you yeah. you were a closet goth girl yeah i got into it more after high school i kind of embraced my it wasn't goth so much but emotional not music. conforming to oh, like yeah. Fashion and sure, man. you know, coloring my hair and like, oh yeah, piercing things. radical. What'd you pierce? Well, I pierced my nose and okay. like a few in my ear and my yeah. belly button and my tongue. You did all of that, yes. And they're all gone now. They're all gone. I have like a little one up here at the top of my ear. Actually, oh. I got that one in New York when I was on SNL. But oh, so that was a more recent. That's piercing. a more recent one. No, never throw the tongue post in. No, that that closes up after like an hour. <laughs> it's like an alien. Yeah. So you're all pierced up, but no tats. No, I had tats. <laughs> yeah, I've oh, got man. three, and one of them I'm in the process of removing, and that's the one I got at that time. Oh yeah. Um, Where it's is it? So ugly. Where do you think? Mm -hmm. It's just on your lower back. Yeah, I mean it's not <laughs> lower my lower back. I try to say it's not a tramp stamp. I'm like it's higher than a tramp stamp. Uh -huh. It's a little higher. Uh huh. Um, is that the last remaining one, or you, you've got? No, a then I have a tiny little. X oh. right here, well, nice. and then I've got like a little script on my ribs. A which script, are, like, you know, like words. Oh. What do you got there? Um, I don't want to say it. It's Why? Because I don't know. It's private. Just between you and whoever sees that <laughs> yeah, part of I your guess. body. <laughs> it's like, hey there, this is my skin. No. That's what it says. No, <laughs> but in beautiful old English, <laughs> so it looks like it's a poem. <laughs> That's what the big are you secret? looking at? Okay. Um, yeah. So you can keep that to yourself. I'm getting uh, the back one removed. What was it? It was. Well, I might as well just say what it was. It's so embarrassing. It's on its way the out. The first, first, it was a little like kind of black sort of sun with mm -hmm. a little Leo thing in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not into astrology. But you're a Leo. But I'm a Leo. So okay. I thought, and my friend was getting one. Right. Is what happened? So I was sure. like, yeah, cool. I'll get, I'll get that. Yeah. And then I moved to LA and I was like, I don't want to do, I don't want this anymore. I'm going to yeah. change it. I'm going to make it into an ohm symbol. <laughs> oh yeah, the ohm. So sure. it was an ohm because then I got really into like meditation. Oh, I like, yeah. went to India and I was into that whole thing. And then I added vines on the side. Vines on the side of the ohm. So this was a growing thing. It was a, yes. a malignant tattoo. That yeah. you, and now it's bigger. Yeah, it just keeps getting bigger. And then I was almost going to cover it up yeah. a few years ago. And I was like, no, it needs to... I don't want this on my body. Yeah. When I'm older, it's like, oh, no. So they're taking it off now? Yeah. It's Skin awesome. grafts? It's not fun. All right. There you go. So I guess you do I have one or it. two regrets. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. I may meet someone really interesting when I go to get it. The next session <laughs> to get it removed. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So you're being arty. You're listening to Smiths. You're getting tattoos. You got a lot of piercings. <laughs> and now you you take this acting class. Yeah, take the acting the, class. Because I feel like now we're at the now we're, we're at the bit. We're now at the moment. Now we're we're done, right? Is no, it I, no. We're this is all going to cut down <laughs> to like eight minutes. <laughs> You're just gonna cut to the to yeah, to right. To, no, I don't. Me I saying don't. drugs. No. Um, oh yeah, so I took the class and I really liked it. And my teacher was yeah. very uh, encouraging. He was yeah. just like, "Have you ever thought of doing this? You know, you're you, maybe you should." And I was yeah. like, "No, I've never thought of it. I mean, in in my sleep, sometimes yeah. I imagine that I'm right. in like the movies or something, but everybody does. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah." 
Um, so I was there, I was finishing up and I got a job that I didn't want. And I just had one of those moments where I was like, what am I doing? What job? I got a job at a plastic surgeon's office hmm. to do computer, uh, like Photoshop basically on people's faces to do like the after, like after they had the surgery, like what, what they would look like. Yeah. Which I didn't really have quite the experience for that. I mean, I'd studied some of that in school, but like, I didn't. What the fuck was that about? I like, got why that jo- job? I, d- I don't know. Was it satisfying It was somehow? like uh, paid well, I guess. And but I, you didn't get off on it? Like, you know, like this is exciting. No, I never started it. I, I got the job. Oh. Like, I found out I got the job and then I, I was in my friend's apartment. Yeah. I was, I was staying there. It's like one of those things when after you say yes to something that you don't want to say yes to, yeah. you get hot and sweaty and know, panicked is, and yeah. you're like, what did I just commit to? Yeah. And I had that moment where I was like, uh, what am I doing? I live in Tucson. Uh-huh. I'm by myself. Yeah. I don't want to do this for a living. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? And so I... I remember this so specifically. I went into the bathroom, and this is true if you're ever trying to decide something. Yeah. If you look in the mirror and ask yourself a question, you can't lie. Yeah. I went in the in the bathroom, and I looked in the mirror, and I was like, okay, like, what do you want to do? Yeah. And it just came out, I want to move to LA. Yeah. And I want to try acting. Hmm. <laughs> this is such a weird story, but I guess I'll just tell it. So I... I was a little shocked that that came out and I was like, okay, uh, I've never been to LA. Um, I, my roommate lives there, but like that's the only connection that I have. Like I don't have any experience. I don't even know where to go or how to, how do you like get into acting? Yeah, it's daunting. And so I got in my car and I went to this bookstore and cause I like to go to bookstores to like clear my head and look at pictures and read and there was a sign that was like psychic Mike or whatever. I think his name was Mike the Psychic uh-huh. or whatever. And it was sure. like a dollar a minute. That's trustable. Mike so, the Psychic. Yeah. And I I think at this point, I don't think I'd ever seen a psychic before. Is anyway. It something I just, you like, did more of? I did it a few times, but it's not something that I do. It's, I I'm go. not into it. Um, psychic Mike. Psychic Mike. And I was like, all right, I'll do 10 minutes or $10. <laughs> so I went in and I sat with this guy because it was just one of those things where I was like, all right, well, this is happening. And I felt so like wandering and yeah. like lost a little bit. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I went and saw him and he was like, do you, you know, do you have a piece of jewelry I can hold? And I was like, sure. And I took a ring off and yeah. I, he was like holding it. You didn't take your tongue post out? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> so he, I, he was holding my ring. Yeah. And he looked at me and he was like, what are you doing in Tucson? He's like, you don't want to be here. He's like, why aren't you in LA? You should have been there like years ago. <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs> and I was like, um, okay. Uh, what else? Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've never had an experience like that or since. And yeah. I was like, um, and he's like, have you thought about going? Is this, and I was like, uh, yeah, I've like, I don't know if he was just reading my, my mind. I don't know what it was, but it was a very profound moment for Good me. Because job, I was like, guy. yeah, I don't know whatever happened to him. Um, so I went home and I called my roommate in LA and I was like, I'm coming to LA tomorrow. Um, but wow, I'm that not, was quick. But I'm not telling my parents yeah. and I'm dropping out of school. Can I come stay with you? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, sure. So I packed up all my shit. That day. The next day. Yeah. I like, went to the vet because I had to get drugs for my cat so I could drug her and have her in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, drove to L.A., got lost, went to that diner on Sunset. I think it's called, like, Dukes or something. Dukes, yeah. And I felt weird because I'm I'm close with my parents and yeah. I talk to them sure. often, especially when you're away. Oh, you're you being talk bad. To them all the time. Yeah. And I didn't tell them that I was there or anything. And... As far as they knew, I was still in Arizona, just like studying art and just like yeah. living in Tucson. Sure. And I was like, okay, what do I do? Like, how do I tell my parents? Yeah. And my friend's mom was like, why don't you 
sign up for like a class or something and tell them like, you know, I'm in this class, like yeah. I'm doing something or right. I got in, whatever. Right. So I went to like Lee Strasberg or something. Sure. And like had my interview in quotes and then started taking classes there and I called my parents. <laughs> I called my mom and she was very supportive. Uh-huh. She was a little worried about yeah. you know, how I was going to like support myself right. and all that stuff. But she was like, I think because she knew I was not really happy. My dad was more like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And like, do you know? And you get a lot of like, do you know how hard it is to make it in that business and the numbers and the... Which comes from love. You it, know, they're concerned, concerned, but they were letting you go to art school. Yeah, but if I had a child that did that, I would, I would be, that's, I would be concerned. That's usually the only reason yes. they're freaked out. But when you're in your twenties, you take that as them not being supportive and right. get angry. Sure. Um. Yeah. I just I got a job at this place in Beverly Hills called the Hollywood Hot Dog Company. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was like a cute little restaurant where they sold like gourmet hot dogs. It was like sure. in Beverly Hills. Did you have um, to wear an outfit? No. Oh. But I do remember. The rumor starting back in Rochester that I, like, lost it a little bit and moved to L.A. because a psychic told me to and I have a hot dog stand. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was the rumor. And I was like, it's a restaurant. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's sort of like a, an interesting yet harmless rumor. Yeah. It's not like, man, she's fucked up. I'm like, I didn't go because this, uh, it was a lot of explaining. All right. So, so there you are at the hot dog place doing some method work. At the Lee Strasberg yeah. Institute. And I just started uh, working little odd jobs in L.A. and uh, didn't have an agent, didn't... I wouldn't say I gave up, but I was... Once I moved there, I was like, oh, this city is full of people who yeah. have experience and take classes and have headshots and have agents and know people. And I knew nobody. Depressing in, in a way. Yeah, well, so yeah. I just like worked and I I got a job at anthropology oh, that's on good. the promenade. And that's nice. And I just like worked there for a while. My best friend in Arizona ended up moving here. Introduced me to these guys. I ended up doing like interior painting mm-hmm. for like in people's homes like um, wow. uh marbling like stencil stuff, marbling, oh. stenciling. So oh. basically like it could be wallpaper but Right. These people had a lot of money, so they wanted it painted. <laughs> and you had painting, you had ex- art experience. So I had got to do that. And the reason I'm telling that story is because uh, Richard, the guy I'm still friends with, he one day was like, I just saw a show at the Groundlings. Have you yeah. ever heard of it? And I was like, no. And he said, I thought of you the whole time. You have to go check it out. It's improv. And I didn't, yeah. I had no idea what improv right. was right. or anything. I yeah. knew what sketch comedy was because I was a huge SNL fan. But you were. Yeah, yeah. As a kid. Yes. Who oh, was yeah. your favorite performers? Um, Phil Hartman oh, yeah. was like my absolute favorite. You loved SNL. I did, yeah. Never thought you'd be on it. No, I don't think anyone ever does. <laughs> I think that's why it's so it's such a crazy experience. It's it seems like such an unobtainable unattainable yeah. goal. So so he he tells you about the groundlings. Yeah, and I go see a show and it was like the opposite of Arizona. It was like when you know you're in the right place. I was like, oh, I was supposed to find <laughs> this theater. I've never done improv in my life, yeah. but I want to do it. Yeah. And it didn't seem like, it didn't seem as intimidating to me as acting. Uh huh. Because with acting, you have the script and yeah. you're, there's, in some way, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. Yeah. There's a critique involved. There's yeah. like a, Either you're good or you're not. I felt like I didn't have experience, so I was insecure in my acting uh-huh. abilities. And improv was like, so you just make up stuff, and you can p- be different characters. And I, I started taking classes there. I auditioned for an improv group, separate from there, and got in and started doing shows. And I just, I loved it so much. And I would just work during the day at like restaurants. Yeah. And it was probably the best. Besides my SNL years, it was it was the best five six years of my life. Who was on the show that you first saw? Anybody? Uh, you mean when you went to the Groundlings that first time? Oh yeah, I remember uh, Jennifer Coolidge, um, uh, Holly Mandel, Brian Palermo, Mike Hitchcock. I think Mike McDonald was there. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick Bristow. I knew, and then I started going more when it was like the Will Forte, Maya yeah. Rudolph. Um, 
I just missed Will Farrell and that whole group there. Um, so many people. So, so and that it was like my life. I loved it. And you, you get such a family away yeah. from home and you get so close to each other because you're all like scared and taking risks in front of each other and writing and putting things up that you write for the first time. Yeah. And you, yeah, and so that, how many, how many years did you take classes? God, I can't remember. I did like the first three levels and then I took a little time off. Because then I went through like, what, yeah, that's when I went to India. So I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Oh, really? After three years of groundlings? Yeah, because ha- you had to wait in between some of the levels. Yeah. It could be like a year and a half. Really? Yeah. So that's when a lot of people like do other shows. Right. And write stuff. And, and you just hit the wall. And I was like. Spiritually? Yeah, I didn't. I was I was trying to figure out all that stuff. And what, how'd you do it? Um, Well, they never really figure it out. Um, <laughs> but what was the, what'd you I, I, yeah, I went to India for three months. Just and, out of nowhere? Like, yeah. you, why were you compelled? I was learning a lot about different religions. I became obsessed with reading about the origins of yeah. religions. And I, there. You were God shopping? I wasn't looking for a new one. I was wondering Did why. Did you have one in place? Well, I grew up in a, in a Christian. Right. Like, my parents were Christian and Episcopalian. Right. So I just was like, okay, I'm Christian. Yeah. And then I got to the the age yeah. i guess where i was like well when people ask me what i am like why do i say that yeah. what does that mean yeah. and if someone said why are you christian i wouldn't know what to say right so i just got i don't know i think there's that age in your 20s and sure. you start reading about like yeah stuff like that i just drank did blow <laughs> smoked a lot of weed yeah i smoked a lot of weed and drank and was like who am i <laughs> yeah. um so you go but and it was walk- partly because i was feeling I was wondering if acting was a selfish career because it huh. felt that way to me because I wasn't sure about the other side of it. And I was putting all my time into it and putting on these shows. And I just didn't know if I should be like giving back somehow or like volunteering or doing something else with really? my life. You grew up with that idea of charity? I, I don't know. I think it came when I started. It Acting was the first thing that I put everything into and i knew it's what i was supposed to be right. doing and so i think whenever you commit to something so hard the moment you do it you step back and you're like all right well do i <laughs> what are the pros what are the cons i'm sure it's like that with mm-hmm. relationships mm-hmm. and with a lot of things instead of just like but selfish. i think it's rare to like dive in and then just be like i'm good but selfish is sort of specific Maybe selfish was the wrong word. I, I don't know if it is because like I wrote down before I got out here after watching a lot of your work that I wrote down self-centered characters. Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. Definitely welcome to me for sure. And, and skeleton twins. Yeah. Bridesmaids? A little bit? A little bit. Yeah. Some of the SNL characters that you created? Oh, yeah. Like I did, I never had the thought about it before how character work really involves its own, like in order for a character to be defined, especially in a comedic sense, it it really is a self. There's a lot of self involvement to them. Totally. Because they are always unaware that they're the character in the room. Yeah. You know, an SNL character never goes, Oh wait, everyone's looking at me because I'm wearing a weird jacket. Right. (laughs) They just kind of say, I'm here. This is who I am. I'm going to talk this way and Mm -hmm. deal with it. And they're, that's what's self funny self involved yeah in that you're watching this person right and that's very that's very interesting that you pointed that out yeah i i, I yeah. don't cuz i you know the way i think about things and you know knowing you were coming over and knowing that you know i knew certain stuff that you've done and then kind of like having to fill my head with you because that's the way I do it. And then to sort of like go about my day and clean my litter box and sort of think about Kristen Wiig and think about the characters because like I'm relatively self-centered person and like, and I have a great deal of more empathy for people who are sort of pathologically self-centered because I connect with them. But, but so it's interesting to me that, you know, your apprehension was, selfishness in a way yeah and i i don't i mean that's a whole other we can question get back of to like the yeah like later. where characters come from and yeah 
do you find things in yourself or do you notice, are you hyper aware of those traits in other people because you don't have them or is it a combination of, I don't really know what it is? You don't. No, I don't know. Well, when you come back from India, after you've done your soul yes. searching and yeah. you've, you've traveled the country and you've seen all of the colors and it's exciting, what did you come back with? Um, well, the trip was long and it was hard and traveling through India by yourself as a female is, is difficult. Uh -huh. And this was what, I don't know, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I definitely knew that it's, you realize it's a big world and there are people who don't have mm -hmm. things that we take for granted. Right. And that, um, whatever you do, it's all about intention and that if you're going to be, there's nothing wrong with being an actor. There's nothing selfish about it. If mm -hmm. I'm on SNL, I could look at it as like, oh, but I'm making people laugh. And sure. isn't that a gift for yeah. someone? Yeah. And I think... I do think everything's about intention. So you reconciled it. Yeah, and it it but I needed to because yeah. I I I didn't want to just put it in the back of my brain and ignore it and right. just say like, okay, well, I'm getting jobs, so Right, you didn't want to be just ambitious. I wanted to know why I was doing what sure. I was doing. Sure. Uh, right. And to, and for it to feel right because it was meaningful. such a commitment <laughs> and yeah. like it's everything and i wasn't doing anything else i wasn't like i didn't finish school but the joy of it and the creativity of it I and the it. and the community of it wasn't enough for you to know it wasn't just some sort of job you were gunning for it was at the time because that sort of felt like the elementary school part of it right. and then in the groundlings you sort of feel like as you're working more and then maybe you get an agent yeah. you start auditioning you're in like high school and yeah. then like then when you sort of graduate, you're like, okay, well, what job am I going to get? Like, how am I going to take what I learned and do what I want yeah. to do? Um, because I, I do what I do because I like it mm -hmm. and I'm not, it's not about like, I mean, I don't know. It sounds so weird to be like, it's not about the money, but it's really not for me. Um, I, I'm glad that I get paid to do what sure. I do, but I always say like when I'm on my deathbed, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be thinking about, you know, my, the movies I did or like my IMDb page. It's not going to be about that. It's going to be about the people around me and the life that I lived and yeah. how did I do? Yeah. Um, cause I think happiness is so, sort of underrated nowadays. Sure. Um, as a goal. I'm, 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 I like okayness. Happiness is like comes and goes. It does, mm -hmm. but it's nice when you. Yeah, it. <laughs> and it, it, if you can acknowledge it. Oh, it's yeah. happening. Yeah. Look, I'm right here. I think you do. Uh-huh. I think you do. I'm getting better at it. It's very uncomfortable for me. To be happy? Happy, yeah. Because... Then what happens? That's what I suffer from. <laughs> I, so, I That's exactly what it is. Like, when things are great is yeah. when I'm the most... Nervous. It's like the rug being pulled out from under me. Yeah. Syndrome. Yeah. Or just, whatever you call it. Can't stay at this level. I, I. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. More in relationships than in career. Right. Um. Because career just changes so much, and it's so like. This is always a new challenge in a way. Yeah, and you can you can yeah. start your day over any time. And with of. relationships, the challenge is how am I going to stay in this? <laughs> no, for me, it's that like <laughs> once I'm happy. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is when I worry that it's going to go away because it's great. Does that happen? N no, I mean, I mean, relationships end, sure. But <laughs> um, I think that, I think that just comes from, I don't know. Maybe, you can't track it? Divorce I related? Can. I think it's divorce related. I think if you think your life is great and, and then, something horrible happens out of the blue at you a certain age yeah get you're like oh okay i need eyes on the back of my head and the right. side and the top and underneath and or that was a lie yeah and you're like okay so if things are great then the yeah. next thing's gonna come but i'm i'm much better at it now i'm much more of like we're grown-ups you yeah. get grown up and i heard that saying i was telling someone i forget who said it yeah like if you if you constantly worry that the worst thing is going to happen and then yeah. it does, you've lived it twice, <laughs> which is good because I've, yeah, I've said in the past like two years, I've had 
the shift in that where I'm much more zen about stuff and like. Well, I think I think we do to. that the the sort of negative fantasizing to protect ourselves from disappointment and rejection. Like if you imagine the worst thing, anything above that, it's sort of like, yeah, that wasn't so horrible. But why yeah. do you got to put do yourself do? through yeah. that? And like we and we we I think we associate worry with self care. You know, yeah. Like if you worry or if you worry about someone else, mm-hmm. it's 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 that you care about them, but really it's. It's not. It's not. It's just like, how is it going to affect you? Yeah, and it stops the <laughs> flow of things, I guess. Well, yeah, it gets you out of yourself in a weird way. It's like using a bunch of other stuff just to make yourself feel better in some weird way. Like worry is like this. It's just impotent. You know, this attempt at control of things. Yeah. It's, just, it's nothing. To, I mean, I, it can be useful, you know, if you're concerned about something and you, there's action to be taken. Yeah. But if you're just sitting there going like, oh, I wonder if my cat's happy. You know, like, <laughs> but it's filling something else because if you ask yourself, like, okay, if I didn't worry, what would I feel? Then you get into the real oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're avoiding something yeah. else. But, whew. yeah, I got some work to do. We all do. I'm very impressed that you challenged yourself on that level to to sort of, like, wonder whether or not you were, you were being a well-rounded and decent person uh, in light of being consumed with this drive to do this thing yeah yeah i think that's a it's a nice mature kind of um sensitive and uh, thoughtful thing to do well i think you have to ask yourself like why you do stuff because we know what we like and what we want yeah. to do but um and for me and this business is so up and down yeah and crazy you yeah. do have to remind yourself why you're in it a lot yeah. and uh I do love the acting part of it and the writing part of it and the performing with other people and playing off other people. I love it. Yeah, because you're in it and it's yeah. alive and it's but like it's, exciting. Yeah, but it's stressful. It's stressful, yeah. Even like, even acting. Like I just shot something not too long ago and I was like so nervous because I'm always nervous on the first day. Yeah. And I was like, why do I put myself through this every yeah. time? Like I'm fucking nervous. Why do I do this? Why aren't I just home and blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. your head goes... And then you do it and it's fine. You're like, okay. Well, what, what is the, what is the, where is it coming from? Like, I'm going to disappoint them. I'm not going to do it right. Or like, I don't know how to do this. What is it? What is the I fear? don't know how to do this. Right. Yeah. It's all of it. Like, it's not going to be what they want. Or right, I'm not right. going to challenge right. myself. Or I'm going to fall back on the things I normally do. And I'm not going to take risks. I mean, you could, I could. Have you ever had that happen <laughs> though? Where, where you show up to do something and it's not right. And you have oh, to. Oh, yeah. Make, oh, for sure make adjustments uh, that oh, all the time yeah that, i i rarely leave a set going well i nailed that <laughs> <laughs> what's next <laughs> which is good because i but do you I, rely on yourself or have people come up to you and said that yeah you're not hitting it um i th- you know it's like when you do the show it's like yeah. you feel cer- you're there's always like a a gauge you know, and you feel like, okay, I'm in the groove or right. like, I'm having an off day. Right. Um, and sometimes you and just you do have let an off it day. Be. Yeah. You and, just have to let it be. And you don't know. And sometimes that's the thing that's on screen. And then maybe people say you suck or that wasn't good. Or A lot of times they don't know. Or they don't know. Yeah. But you think they know. You think right. everybody knows. And you got to just keep your mouth shut, and right? you just have to say you thought it was fine. <laughs> Nope, I don't need another take. That was yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> but you do know, like, trailer. and I don't have as much, certainly, uh, experience as you uh, outside of, like, stand-up, but in acting where, like, I felt myself getting better. And you definitely know in a scene when something beats out right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. And, like, you know, it took me a long time because, like, I'm not the type of comedian that you are to know what I could do physically to make something funny. Like, I had to be very aware of it. And then ease into it and let it happen. And I imagine that's what you got in the years of improving. Yeah. That, you know, you, the whole thing just becomes, you know, one sort of, uh, you're very connected to the funniness in your fingers. Yeah, but it's still fleeting. I mean, it's, it's not something I think you discover and you hold on to. So how do you, how did SNL happen? 
Uh, I I was at the Groundlings, and yeah. I was in the main company. I think I was only in there for like a couple months. So you knew that SNL was a possibility because people happen they that happens at the Groundlings. So at this it's point, thing. you, yeah, you like, must know that you're going to be seen for it. As far as like them coming to see the show, yeah. yes, you knew that would happen. Right. Um, I my manager made like my demo reel. Yeah. And sent it to the show. Yeah. And um, Lindsay Shookus, who still works at SNL, yeah. who I owe my career to, yeah, and who I just saw last night, uh, she saw my tape, and I had my audition. They flew me out to New York. What what characters are on the tape? Oh, my God. Well, I auditioned twice, so yeah. I'm trying to remember the first time. Um, Target Lady yeah. was on there. So that's an old one. That's a Groundlings that's character? That's a Groundlings one. Yeah. Um, Aunt Linda, she was like a movie critic uh-huh. on Update. She was on there. People that you never saw on the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, a few impressions. Uh, I just tried to like show my range of voice. I yeah. think a lot. So I tried to do like different accents. And that was the first reel. That was the first uh, audition. Okay. Yeah. So I, they flew me to New York. Never been more nervous in my life. Sure. Because uh, I don't do stand up. Yeah. Um. But you know how to be in front of a crowd now. I do, but. But that talking to the audience thing is something I didn't do a lot. If I was in character, I could monologue for yeah. 20 minutes. Right. Um, hmm. But because I was... Improvise. Because, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't know... I didn't know if it was funny. Yeah. You know, with stand-up, if you have a thing that works and then you go do it somewhere else, you kind of know. I didn't know because these were just little kind of like bits from scenes or I'd write new things for the characters because it was just a little but you'd be, taste you put them up yeah but it was in the context oh, of right. the scene and yeah, I had yeah, the, sure. the costume yeah, and this yeah. was like a lady who worked at Target and I'm like yeah. okay if they don't think this voice is funny then I don't know where to go um, so I did I heard like it's five minutes like no more than five yeah. which I took as like at five minutes they were going to turn all the lights off and right. everyone was going to go home and yeah. so I bought a stopwatch when yeah. I got to New York and I practiced and I tried to get it like exactly five minutes in my room yeah um auditioned it, f- it felt actually good in I, the they studio. were laughing yeah I, I felt was good there. Lauren was there Seth I, who was there who was Tina um oh, she Mike was the head Shoemaker writer. yeah yeah Paula Pell yeah uh Marcy Klein uh I don't I can't remember who else kind was there kind of a tough crowd yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you can't really see because it's dark and mm-hmm. like you're. It's very, you know, it's SNL. It's like you're yeah. walking into a huge church mm-hmm. and giving a sermon mm-hmm. um, to people that you don't that have never seen you before and who have their arms crossed. <laughs> right. Um, so I did that, and then I never heard anything. I heard like they did tell me I was going to meet with Lauren. Yeah. And I knew Forte and I knew um, Sudeikis, and they were like, "Oh my God, if you're going to meet with Lauren, like that's." That's it. Like yeah. he meets you, and then that's the meeting when he tells you you're hired, and yeah. then this is amazing. So yeah. in my mind, I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, great. I guess I'm getting the job." And I go to meet with him, and I'm sitting in his office, and I'm yeah. nervous, and he's talking about yeah. Chevy Chase something, uh-huh. and then he's like, "You know, we don't have room for you right now." And I was like, Ooh. "Okay." Uh, and he, he he proceeded to talk, and I didn't really like hear anything, and I didn't want to cry, and I was like. Okay, and I was talking to Lindsay about this last night. She's like, I remember walking you downstairs, and you were like, okay, well, well thank you. you. <laughs> and um, I was, it's cool I got to meet him. I got yeah. to see his office and <laughs> st- stuff in his fish tank, and <laughs> thank you, and, and going back to cried. L.A., and then that was it. Yeah. And then, Did but you I, cry? I did cry, yeah. I cried, but it also felt like, okay, if, I, right. if that wasn't meant to be my right. path, like, it's great. And then, like... I want to say a month and a half later, I got a call from them again yeah. saying, we want you to audition again. And in my mind, I was like, oh my God, I gave you, I did everything I had in that five minutes. Like, I don't have anything yeah. else. And so they said, you know, if you have any more, like anything else that's, you can repeat some stuff, but new stuff would be great. Sure. Okay. And so I went out and then I auditioned again and I felt great about it. And, you know, some of the people came in my room after and said it was great and funny and i was like okay and then and then the season started <laughs> i went back to la and the season started and i was like well <laughs> i'm not on the show so <laughs> i I'm guess i did because i'm watching it so i guess i didn't get it yeah and then after the 
third show, they called me Mm -hmm. and they said, you're hired. We want you to come out just the fourth show and watch it. Yeah. And then you start that next week. So I was like, I had to leave on like a Wednesday and it was like the weekend or something. Yeah. So I had to like pack up my life and I was like, um, okay, I'm on SNL. It was, I've never been more nervous, intimidated, scared. I'd never lived in New York yeah. city before. Right. I'd been there for the audition and I was just like, like, where do I live? <laughs> you know, what's, what, how do I get around? Um, and it just kind of started. Yeah. It was like, where did you live? I, I called a friend of mine I went to high school with and I said, where do I live? I don't know the areas. He's like, well, I've lived on the Upper West Side. I was like, great. I'll live there. So I did. I got a great little apartment and then I moved downtown after I got to know the city. Um, and who was there? Who were, who were, who'd you walk into? Um, oh, uh, let's see. Amy, Tina, mm-hmm. Maya, Rachel Dratch, Chris Parnell, um, Forte. But after that first year, a lot of people left. Yeah. Tina, Rachel, Maya, Horatio, Parnell. So a whole new crew. Now you're a veteran. So then it's, yeah, just, you're forced to just like. But you were working right away, right? I mean, you were, you were on, you were doing bits. You weren't like, you know, on the sidelines, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a weird, uh, there's no science to it, I think. No, I, know. I mean, you write sketches and hopefully yeah. you get them on. I, I got something on the first show. Yeah. Um, but that I wrote with, uh, Jason. Yeah. And, uh, it just kind of started from there. And you were like a worker, man. I mean, you did a lot of shit. I loved it. <laughs> like, I, um, writing night was, was very daunting because you had to like, you know, you'd come in at like three or four in the afternoon mm-hmm. and you'd leave at like five in the morning mm-hmm. and you'd know you'd have to like have three or four things yeah. written that you would have to read in yeah. front of a large group of people and people were still figuring you out and yeah. like deciding yeah. about you and the writers. Yeah. And yeah. we didn't know. I was like, okay, well this worked at Groundlings. But yeah. I don't know if this is going to work. You yeah. don't know if any of your stuff is going to work. Right. Working with improv and writing sketches at Groundlings is different than the machine of SNL. Well, these are people that have never seen you before. Right. So if you start talking in a voice, yeah. they're either going to not laugh or think it's funny. And I, you, How, what was you, had, to like, you had to wait <laughs> for the decision. Um, I mean, I enjoyed trying new things sure. and it was, I got stuff on. Yeah. Um, you now you're, this is happening post my, you know, resolution with Lord Michael. So I don't have the same weird obsessive intensity around him that I did. Oh, you did previous. Yeah. It <laughs> was, yeah. It drained my listeners and then Lauren agreed to let me interview him. Yes, I did hear that. I didn't, I haven't heard his show, but I heard he did your show. Yes. Well, the whole first like 20 minutes is me walking through that meeting and getting some closure around what I thought happened and what he <laughs> and thought. And what really happened? happened? Do you feel better? Yeah. Good. I feel better about him. Good. I, you know, I don't know that I, I don't know that I would have been right for the show or anything, but uh, but I did get I did get a sense of him. He's a guy who works at a building, and he loves it. He loves it. <laughs> yeah. He breathes it. It's no, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like it's he really like magnetic. doesn't matter how much money or how powerful he is. He's like there in it, and he, he has to been, put on a good show every yep, Saturday. It's all he, he cares loves about. It. And you you love him. I love him more than anything. Yeah. We have a very, um, he's like family to me. I love him. Do you talk to him frequently? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We get together and have dinner and text and stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, he's Does he, when you great. do movies and make choices, do you uh, ask him for advice? Uh, I mean, we talk about things like mm-hmm. when we when we see each other and, you know, he Whatever he gives me as far as advice, I listen to. Yeah. Sure. But like when you decide to do a movie that, you know, because he's a big movie guy, right? So like when you choose to do a movie like, you know, uh, Welcome to My World or like something that seems Welcome more- to me. <laughs> Welcome to me. That, w- that seems more challenging. I don't think he knew about that one. Oh, really? Swip yeah. That, I, I did that by him? I, I mean, we don't talk like before... The oh, project. You, you don't you don't say like uh, I'm having trouble making a decision or like do you think this would not no, that kind of, no no he trusts you 
Yeah, I think, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I think with that's such a personal thing, like picking a movie to do, you have to kind of only listen to yourself. Those two movies, like to me, you know, and I've seen some of the bigger movies, and I've seen some of the movies that you've had smaller parts in, but like these were big movies for you, and they were odd movies, and they're dark movies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't like I didn't see either of them when they were out just because I don't do a lot and I don't go to a lot. And, you know, I don't you know, I love Hater and I love, you you know, I I don't I loved seeing Joanna Gleason. Oh, yeah. But Hater is just so good. Hater's great. Oh, my God. I don't don't know. It's like some I don't know where he's from another planet. He is. He's a genius. Kind of is, right? Yeah, no, he really legitimately is. <laughs> but he's a genius, but he's a decent guy genius. He's not a genius you're sitting there going like, well, I don't know if I'd want to hang out with him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's, uh, he can kind of do anything, and he's like one of the best actors I've ever worked with. Yeah, he's a worker. Like, yeah. he'll work. Like, you know, he's got a fucking discipline to him. Yeah. Right? Because he cares about it. Yeah. yeah. But I imagine you do, too. Yeah. I mean, I mean when you, you have do- to. Right, to do characters that are, are, are big but not inhuman. Yeah. There's a balance, right? Yeah. But uh but so my point was that, you know, these movies for me, because I know they weren't they're dark movies which are hard sell, but like I I love that the uh, Welcome to Me movie. Thanks. That's so Thank out you. there, man. It was really out there. I, I mean Elliot, really out yeah. there. Yeah. Um uh, my friend Elliot wrote the script and it was just like one of the best things I'd ever read and you know there's something about reading a script and like getting a movie together you know this one had the the director but you know getting financing and like casting it and scheduling and where yeah. are we shooting and it's so it's so hard but yeah. it's so when you were you involved it, in that were you a producer yes oh yeah it's crazy it's it's so hard. Stay in budget and shit. Oh, and there's just so many little things that can go wrong and do go wrong, and you just have to like plug up the. Did dam. you shoot it in Palm Desert? We shot a little bit there, but mostly in LA. The thing I liked about it was that there was moments here where I'm like, this would completely be uh, an amazing public access show. Yeah. <laughs> or an infomercial. Yeah. And and it became something. It was almost like like beyond what sketch can do but in the same world does that make sense totally yeah i mean she's a character in a way and and like you were saying before yeah. we were, how we were describing characters as yeah. a person who's like the the one that everyone's looking at in the room that's yeah. definitely that character partly because she right. wanted it to be that way it was part of her pathology <laughs> yeah yeah and like this idea that i was talking about about these self-centered characters and you thinking about that what do you, where do you think that comes from? I don't know. I, I don't know if you could say all of them are. I do. No, no, no. But I'm just yeah, meaning like, but, like Target Lady, uh, Gilly. I would like, say Target you know. Lady's more like uh, in her own world and that she's so happy to be working there. That's right. all she cares about. Um, and... Yes, occasionally she'll like run off and <laughs> yeah, yeah. leave the person yeah, yeah. there, but Remind. it's because it's like it's it's very joy based. Sure, like, she's just someone who's right. just like obsessed. Excited. With yeah, being yeah, and there. I don't think it's a negative thing. Yeah, no, no, no. But it I just... mean, definitely for sure. And it's it's funny because uh, the Aunt Linda character is based off someone that I knew, and the Penelope is based off someone that I knew. Um. I think what it illustrates to me, and I don't want to interrupt you unless no, you, unless no, you, I don't have anything else. <laughs> was even some of the impression, like you know, some of the the impersonations that you did, reveal that about celebrity and public people in general. I think that's some sort of bizarre gift that you have is that it's innate in you to find this, like this weird kind of self contained. You know, it's, 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 it's freakish, but it's what's funny. Like, whether it's like Michelle Bachman or any of them or the, the, the woman with the, the financial advisor. What's her name? Uh, oh, Susie Orman. Yeah. yeah. Like, though, all those people, like when you play them, Liza, obviously, but like when you play them, that the note that you find is that they're in their own fucking world. And, and that's what's hilarious in a way. Yeah. I feel like you almost have to make them in their own world. Otherwise, the impression doesn't work because 
to me, it's like it's such a fine line because I never want to approach things from like I'm making fun of someone, right. like from a mean. Right. I just never find that funny, yeah. even comedy with yeah. the other. I just don't find it. For me, it's not ever what I wanted to do. Right. So the trick is finding that one thing or five things that make that person uh, sort of recognizable. Like what, how would you describe that person? And then just taking it and turning it up to like 50. Yeah. You know, like when I would do to Kathy Lee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If I would like laugh like that, she doesn't do that. Like she doesn't keel over and like do like she's not that right big. Right. But I would just take something that she did and like make it bigger. And I think in doing that and taking something that a person does or says or how they act and making it bigger, you are making them the most important person in the room. You are making them a character. So how do you layer it up? Do you get the voice first? It depends. With, um, not with a with an original character, but with a an impression. Um, like because I was obsessed with Kathy Lee for the for a long time. Um, in a way where I'd watch her and like because it was so mainstream and so odd. But I used to love Regis and Kathy because I was home, I was a comic, and I would watch them because Regis was like this old school broadcaster, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and Kathy Lee was a lunatic. But like, they were so funny together. No, and watching their really old episodes, but that like, was the thing. They so funny. They riffed. Yeah, like they were in real time. Yeah, riffing live, and I'm like, who the fuck does that? Yeah, and they would just confidently do that. You just watch Kathy Lee. Like I don't know how Cody turned out, but I was concerned <laughs> <laughs> for for years. Like I think why it turned she, out okay? Oh, good. Yeah. But uh, she just, to me, she was visibly, mentally erratic. I just found her very entertaining and very, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by people that don't have a filter. Yeah, and right, that's don't it. don't think about that stuff. Right, so that's a personal fascination for you. Yes, for sure. Because you're the opposite. Not in like a blanket, like right. I care what people think, because right. in many aspects of my career-wise, like yeah. I, I don't, you can't, right. you'll drive yourself crazy. Right. But I'm aware of, you know, like if I am doing an interview, yeah. either this or like in print, right. I'm, I can see the words I'm saying. I'm yeah. very aware that everything I'm saying, yeah. is anything I'm going to say like going to be controversial or is like, am I going to have to worry sure. about this? Not filtering myself right. in a way where I'm not being true, but I have an awareness of like sure. my surroundings. <laughs> right. You're not a loose cannon who's right. out of control. Exactly. And, and, and you do have to be careful of that now. And I imagine that's one of the reasons why you're not on any social media. Yeah. I don't have any desire to be that's connected. It's commendable. Yeah. I just don't. You can keep your life to yourself. That's the goal. Yeah? Yeah. For as long as I can. Well, you seem to be doing a good job. And uh, the sausage movie I liked. Sausage party, thanks. But I want to be before we go. I want to yeah. make sure I get some technique in here. So, so okay, walk me through uh, building an imp an impersonation. Um, it de it depends. Like mm -hmm. someone like Susie Orman, Paula Pell, and I would write those in the beginning, and I just had always wanted to do her because yeah. I find her so fascinating, and she is a character. Yeah. I mean, just the way she talks and acts i mean I, i'm i'm fascinated by her i think yeah. she's so brilliant and um she also doesn't care like yeah. she does have that element of, like she doesn't care how she acts yeah. or talks or um but not in like a loose cannon way it's just right. how she is and that came from just like i watched her a lot so i just kind of got the voice yeah and then we just started writing about how she like saves money and like the jokes kind of went there right and right, just right. Went, like snowball yeah but if i had to do like if someone said, okay, this week you're doing um, some political person. Yeah. And they're like, um, here's a tape. I would put it in, but I wouldn't watch it. I would just listen to it. So yeah. I would like close my eyes. And then I would kind of like talk along with them and like try to get the voice right. Yeah. And then I would watch it. But that's where like sort of the exaggeration would come in. Like uh -huh. if someone's eyes are a little like Nancy Pelosi. She's yeah. kind of has like bigger eyes. And like, I'm going to open my eyes as wide as they can go. To make it funny. Yeah. Um, and you just have to find those little things and mm -hmm. just exaggerate it without mm -hmm. being an asshole. Okay. And then when original characters are presented to you, uh, you know, in scripts as, as an actor uh, and also characters that you create from nothing, 
you, you, you know, it would seem to me that you're able to invest more of your own vulnerability into them. Yeah, I mean, when you write, like, I, I wrote a lot of my stuff with two writers, James Anderson and Kent, uh, Kent Sublet and Paul Appel, and characters would just come from us, like, messing around in the room or, like, um, just, I just would start talking a certain way or, like, hey, I saw this woman, she did this or yeah. she talked like this. And, yeah. like, I remember Gilly, I was in Paula's room and I was like, I want to do a character that smiles like this right just like smiled like that and we just came up with this devious child and like how she would look and then we wrote the song in the beginning the dance is the and it just came out of that's crazy that that dance and some (laughs) oh the dance oh my god (laughs) it was always different (laughs) they're all i don't know it's hard they're all different they all come from different places well no i like that come from real people sure but I like that because like, I talked to Daniel Klaus, the cartoon, the comic uh, graphic novelist. I don't know what you would call him. He's a brilliant guy. And he's, he deals with very sort of, um, you know, painful characters. And he said that a lot of times he'll just see a person on the street and be like, th- just that moment of seeing that person would inspire him to build a life. Oh, yeah. So, like, you know, I could see how you could take a smile and then just build a life backwards from it. Yeah, because you just start talking. And that that was like some exercises we would do at the Groundlings. You'd just all be walking on the stage. Yeah. And you're like, all right, now walk with your hips forward. Yeah. And now um, swing your arms really high. And like now like do something with your mouth like kind of to the side. Yeah. Everyone come to the, f- to the fourth wall and you just start talking. And like all of a sudden you're this person. Oh, wow. And you sort of develop like what kind of person stands like this? Yeah. Like, who am I? Like where do I work? Right. And then you just – it's such – to start with the physical aspect sometimes is, so is a great way to come up with something. Yeah. So immediate too, huh? Yeah. Now, when you do something like specifically uh, Welcome to Me, where you have somebody who has a psychological problem and is, you know, the comedy, well, you're very good at balancing of keeping the comedy in, not, you know, intact through very painful characters like both of the like you know skeleton twins you yeah. know it's heavy shit yeah that's a heavy movie <laughs> but uh, but but yeah it's, it's it's very heavy but somehow it balances you know somehow like you know even at the end you know they i didn't know how it was going to end i assumed you weren't going to die spoiler alert <laughs> years later <laughs> Okay. Um, but the, the comedy still main you know, it still held, you know, it, it wasn't like big laugh comedy, but the, the nature of the person was yeah. still something, I don't know how to explain it, not light, but, but you, you had control of it somehow. Well, I think when playing someone that has, you know, a psychological behavioral disorder yeah. that people really suffer with, like yeah. you have to be careful and you have to be respectful and you don't want to just say okay well from what i know about this she's right. gonna act like this yeah and so you know i talked a lot with the director about it because i i didn't want to make about fun one? of her about the world about, about, about welcome to me yeah welcome i didn't i didn't want to make fun right i wanted people to be laughing with her not so much at her right um but and there's little things that would make us laugh that because she was the character, like like when she was ordering food and she got really excited and she's like, I'm going to order the shrimp. Like for some reason, the producer and I always used to like laugh at that. I don't know why. Yeah. Because it was just like a dumb, she was so excited about ordering the shrimp. Um, and I felt like the comedy sort of, if you can call it that, that sort of like seeps through is almost like accidental right it's her excitement you were just playing you know you were yeah you, you'd built this character out like even the moment i thought one of the moments that was like really great was when you because you your character is incapable of of empathy in a way yeah other than oh, for completely. animals yeah kind of but when you decide you have to apologize whether you can or not or whether you're comfortable with it or not and when you're in front of tim Robbins's door yeah, the weird sort of like forced to smile and the <laughs> awkwardness of trying to have an earnest apology and then yeah. to walk away from it. Like that was really, uh, the, I thought that was, that was the beauty of that character. Cause like, cause that character, 
I think the risk is with certain characters that, you know, you got to let them be kind of horrible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you do. Yeah. <laughs> because some, they find a way. You yeah. Know. And then you got to trust the material that it's not going to remain horrible. Yeah. And I, and I, and some people at the end of the movie maybe don't want to be around her. And sure. that's okay too. And that's, those, right. I like those movies too that don't wrap yeah. everything up and everyone's great and forgiven and, yeah. you know. So let's, um, close by, um, talking about the, uh, the challenge of being a hot dog roll. <laughs> it's a bun, Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, that was one of the most fun, easy projects. I mean, Seth and yeah, Evan and so funny, all yeah. those guys, they are just, they just purely come from what they think is funny. Yeah. And so much of like, you know, when you have a, a script for a comedy, it's so... Sometimes, yeah. most times, uh, depending on the studio, is very overthought. Yeah. And, you know, you can write, you can overnote the comedy out of something really quickly. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to be like, this is funny. Yeah. You know, like when we read this at the table read, it got laughs. Maybe we don't need to like dissect every little thing. And with these guys, they're so good at writing a really good great script with characters with arcs and like they get that story part yeah. down and they also just have so much fun and like they don't give a shit they, yeah. if it's funny it's funny like hey it'd be funny if this happened okay let's do that right and it it just goes to show that when you let artists do their thing and write it's like it works it's funny well yeah i thought like i thought there was no way i was gonna watch that movie <laughs> like I just just buy like and I like those guys. I've talked to them and I respect them and I and I think they're funny. But I'm like I'm not an animation guy. Yeah. And like I'm like how the hell are you gonna sustain a movie like this? It, like to me like it was almost like this is just a fuck you to movies in general. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Like you know, we just came up with this stoned idea and fuck you. And then like it was like wow well, it was really compelling and funny and like moving and like everything was well thought out and all this stuff was beautifully done and then all the fucking at the end mm -hmm. like it was just because I love underground comics like old school our crumb shit and just to see cartoon characters just fucking it's good <laughs> you know yeah I love it of that in the world no there's not enough fucking cartoon characters no, there isn't thanks for having me <laughs> <laughs> that's how we end it <laughs> I'm good with that. Uh -huh.